See if this is a good kick. Nice. Nice. <laughs> My name is Cade Mahuka and I'm from Wahiwa, Hawaii. Family aspect of Hawaii, I'd definitely say it's really strong. Everyone wants to be a part of your life, whether it's an auntie, uncle, um, grandma, or grandpa. Everyone's trying to be involved. If you've lived in that community and grew up there, like everybody's like really tight, you know, and you'll know somebody from all parts of the island or you're related to somebody in all parts of the island. We're really close with our like cousins. I'm very close to my cousins. Like I'll see them almost every week, like at least once a week when I was back home. I'm a surfer instructor at home too. So it's like I'm constantly in the water and just like teaching people how to surf. I definitely say surfing is my favorite thing to do, like absolutely favorite thing. When I'm surfing, I don't think about anything else. I just enjoy like being in the water not having to stress or think about like everything in your mind just goes away for like an hour to three hours, like however long I'm surfing. And it's just like pretty amazing feeling. And then I'd also say like hiking. Uh, hiking is like a big thing that I really enjoy just because like who wouldn't want to hike in Hawaii, you know? <laughs> when I went back this summer, we actually hiked up the tallest mountain on Oahu, which is like 4,000 feet in elevation, and it took us uh, six and a half hours to go up. Well, I actually started off playing baseball. It was just boring to me, so I asked my mom if I could play football. Kid played football his whole life, ever since he was like, five years old um, and that was just the sport that he loved. He always had a really big leg too, yeah? Like he never played soccer in his life until ninth grade. I played soccer my whole life and all his cousins played their whole life. So he would end up in little soccer moments here and there. And like one time specifically, I remember being at the park and these other kids all played soccer and then Cade just rocks a shot. Like straight off the boy's chest, like line drive, like smokes it. Guy goes, kid goes flying into the net. I was like, holy smokes, like that freaking kid just smoked that kid. So he helps the kid up, gets the ball back again, fires another shot, like right off the guy's face. Like I was like, holy smokes. And the boy's dad like came in and was like upset. Cause he was like, oh, what are you doing? Like he thought like, this is what he does. And this is, he just does this. This is, you know, he's a, avid soccer player, he never kicked a soccer ball in his life, you know, but he just had like leg strength from a little kid, just like natural. So since he had leg strength as a just pickup game soccer player, I was like, dude, I know you love playing receiver, but you should kick the ball. Back at home in high school, my school is a smaller school. So you really had to play as like everywhere. Everyone had to play everywhere. So I was a receiver, DV, punter, kicker, and then returner. When I was younger, it just, it was a lot of fun for me and I, it was something I could do without having to like stress and think. Like I just play football. He really wanted to play football in college, so. It was really late. Like I remember it was really late. Like all my friends had already committed or like applied for all the schools and chose their school, but I was still like, unsure of where I was going to go or if I even was going to go. Got recruited from this former coach, Bob Harmon. So he talked to one of my friends and then my friend referred me and then my roommates. So then we were like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll meet the guy and check it out and just see what he has to say. I didn't really tell my parents yeah, about it because like Chicago, like Illinois, that's so far away from Hawaii. So. I was like, I don't think my parents will let me go there. Like, it's too far. I think they want me to say West Coast. Towards the end of where he should have already had picked a college and, you know, 
maybe got an offer or something for football and so we met with one coach and kids like ah i don't want to go to oregon like there's too much hawaii people over there I, if that's the case then i might as well just stay in hawaii you know i want to go he's like i want to go somewhere where there's like no hawaii people i said well where because i don't like time's ticking and you need to find a school and he's like oh i didn't want to tell you guys but i actually want to go to a school in chicago and i was like what Chicago like do you know how far that is and he's like yeah see I didn't want to tell you guys because you're not gonna let me go so he said that he was been talking to the recruiter for a while and I'm like oh so you've been talking to a recruiter and he didn't even tell us and he's like yeah um, but he really wants to meet you guys so he's coming to Hawaii what led me to all of it was this guy named Bob Harmon he actually recruited all of the Pacific Islanders me Cade Bison and Andrew and all the other guys too but um yeah he kind of sold us on the school at first I was like yeah I don't know where Bourbon A is I don't even know where Illinois is the only, the only city I knew was Chicago everyone's gonna say that probably but um very very sketched out I guess just coming to the middle of nowhere but something that did catch my eye was it was a Christian school and so I knew my family was gonna be okay with that I knew I was gonna come into an environment where was probably not going to be as hostile as like a JUCO or like a D1. Not hostile, but um, secular, I guess. And during one of the practices, there was a Olivet recruiter that just so happened to come and watch one of the practices. And our head coach like mentioned a couple people like on the team, including my name. And I just started talking to um, Bob Harmon, and he really like led the way with all of it. He said that there was a lot of guys, and then he mentioned that uh, a former team, high school teammate of mine, Titus, is also gonna be coming to all of it, which really sparked my interest. So I wasn't really familiar like with coming out to the Midwest. So like just having like a familiar face, I think was like really nice. So it gave me like more like being comfortable coming up here. I said, okay, we just need to pray about it. I'm like, it is a Christian school, so we love that. Um, but if this is God's plan for you to go there, then he'll make it happen. And basically in like two weeks, everything just fell together. And we're like, okay, that's where you're going, you know? And so he brought him here his freshman year. And every single person, we met whether we were at the store, at the car rental place here, like it was either alumni, a student that comes here, and it it was total God, like just saying like, okay, kid's gonna be fine, you know? Yeah, I was like, wow, Chicago's like really far, you know, from Hawaii. And, but when I came here, it was like, I was just like, oh my gosh, like, God couldn't have picked a better place for him, you know? Like, I just felt so comfortable. Everybody was so loving, like, it was like I was back at home, you know? The first wave of Hawaiians, I want to say, is there was 20 of us um, last year. I remember like we all met in Perry Lobby. I've known Cade since we were four years old together. We played on the same flag football team. It still is crazy. Like we've known each other since we were five and we've been playing football together. Uh, we even played against each other when we got older. But it's just, it's just crazy how we're both playing college football for the same team in the middle of Illinois. <laughs> like who would have thought that like when we were five, oh, we're gonna go do this and play college football in Illinois. Like, no, that wouldn't, everyone would have said we're crazy for that. But it's funny because Andrew, uh, I don't mean to roast him or if this is a roast or anything, but he looks exactly the same. You know, Cade's still the same. He still has like weird hair. Uh, yeah. He, Cade will always say that like I run the exact same as I did as a toddler, but just have it like, it's so funny. And when I found out that he was coming to Olivet, I was like, no way this is the same Cade that like I've known forever. And it just so happened we're going to the same place. 
I also played with Vison. I played uh, with him in middle school, and then I played against him in high school, and now we're playing together again. So I think that's that's cool too. We played Brendan, Malosi, and Vison because they they were all on the same team together, and they they completely smashed us, but. At, at like the last play of the game, I was supposed to get the ball on the one yard line and our quarterback fumbled the ball. And Vison picked it up and ran the other way for a 99 yard touchdown. But like in the background, you just see me trying to chase him down. And like, I was like, dang, no way we just, we just got scored on by like some DB that just picked up the ball. Like we just gave them the ball. And then we came here and I was like, I think this is the, I think this is the guy that scored on us. And I was like, yep, this is definitely the dude. But like, it, it's, it's just crazy how we all ended up together like at the same place. And now we're all playing football together, which is it's awesome. Freshman year, I came in thinking, okay, I'm a freshman. I'm gonna get picked on and stuff. Like I just gotta eat it up and just rough it out freshman year. That's just how it goes. Um, I came and all the upperclassmen really helped like the younger guys get better and they want them to do good. The first thing is family. We're together. Offense, defense, special teams. We're all together. We come together today. The second thing is past. Only thing that matters is the moment. Moments create momentum. Focus on your task. Body language will say everything. Bad play, jump up with a smile play on your face. Good play, jump up with a smile on your face. All day long. Let us poke your head. You guys got that? Yes, sir. We're going to have a lot of fun. Yes, sir. Well, we win, I'm going to pull up, pull up. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Coach Heyman said a pretty cool thing, the first, the parent meeting, I guess you would call it, when all the, we all dropped them off their freshman year. You know, obviously we're all here for football, but my biggest thing, in my words, what he said, what I remember, was that all these kids in this, on his team, in the room, that he hopes that they love the Lord more now, more when they leave than when they came, you know? And that was like huge, like it's the football coach, you know? Like he's like, obviously we're here for football, but this is what I really hope for your kids, you know? Football is football, wherever you go. You gotta love to, catch a ball, you gotta love to hit, you gotta love to score, you gotta love to compete. Coach Heyman, for example, he always, um, he always preaches, love your brother, love your brother. Being around him so much, I can see that it's true. Hello, my name is Beth Conway. I am the director of Pacific Rim Student Success. My main responsibility with the students is during the transition phase of them coming from Hawaii to the mainland. Um, I focus on their academics, I make sure that the students are adjusting um, culturally because there are differences. You have to learn how to adjust to different people, the temperature as well. Um, it's just a different way of life. I would say um, someone that actually really helped me would be Andrew. He was my roommate last year. Uh, we kind of stuck it out together. He was the guy that I would lean on. He would lean on me too. When I first met Auntie Beth, I was like, oh, okay, she seems pretty cool. Like, I felt like she was more of like a counselor more than like she's going to do so much for us. I love the fact that they call me Auntie, Auntie Beth. Um, I take pride in that. Um, I feel that's an honor um, and I love them to death. Um, when we got here, she made sure we were good. She even cooked for us, like, like foods back at home. She learned how to cook them. She always makes sure that I'm doing good in classes, that Overall, like, I'm not homesick, and if I am, like, she's always there to talk to me about it. I treat them as, as if they were my own children. I love them very much. I get to know their families. I get to know them. Rides to the airport, that's, like, something just crazy that she even did that. Like, 20 kids having different flights, and she took all of us to the airport. It's very humbling. Um, I have a greater appreciation for the small and simple things in life. We don't have fall in Hawaii. So like seeing all the colors change, it was definitely like, I was like, whoa, this is like really cool. Playing in the snow. That's by, that's by far the like, my most favorite thing. I will never get over it. Like 
There's a couple of practices we had where it just started snowing and in, like when we take a water break, I'm on the side making a snow angel. Every time I go to Chicago and I see the skyline, like right before you enter Chicago, I just think that's like the dopest picture. I love like seeing the skyline because we have nothing like that in Hawaii. Um, just like buildings that are that tall and then like just like a real city. Like we don't have like a real city in Hawaii. Well, this year, now that there are 98, um, it, it's a little more challenging. We um, had approximately 52 of them could not um, go anywhere. And so we actually, with the help of um, people from our church, our discipleship group, um, and uh, some faculty and staff, we fed them here on campus in the, in the warming house. And uh, we had a really good turnout. The kids really appreciated just um, us trying to create that family atmosphere. Everyone here, you just treated with love, which nothing but respect. I may have not known them the best like when I first got here, but now looking at them, like those are my brothers, like I really hope like I know them until I'm like 80. And that's what really made me um, come back again. Just cause I like, like family, you know, family is like the big, Big fam, little eye here, so it truly is like that, I would say, here. <laughs> Sophomore year, uh, I transitioned into a kicker and punter. The pressure is high being a kicker. Uh, I get more nervous being uh, punting, actually, which is weird. If you keep telling yourself, don't mess up, then you're most likely gonna mess up. Our long snapper, Fish, he uh, always told me, just, just kick the ball. Like, don't think about it, just kick the ball. If I miss, I kinda like, like dang it, like, why did I miss that? Like, that was so easy, I should've made it. Throughout the season, I got, like in my head, like don't worry about it, just just kick the ball. Like if you miss, this doesn't like define who you are. You just miss the field goal, which it happens. It happens in the NFL all the time. The support of the team kind of just it helps you, like they help you bounce back. In the beginning, I kind of would beat myself up a lot. But then towards the end, I just remember like it's it's supposed to be fun, like it's football. Like at the end of the day, it's like yeah, it means a lot to me, but it's just a game for real life, like it's just something fun that I get to do. I really like showing um, people my culture. To hear like music from Hawaii over the speaker, like that's huge. Like that brings like a whole new feeling to the campus, yeah, to, to hear just a song that we've heard our whole life in Hawaii that nobody thinks twice about, but kind of makes us proud, yeah, as like parents and people from Hawaii. Like our professors know everyone by name, which is pretty crazy because that's a hard thing to do when you have a bunch of students. I feel like the small like population of students kind of brings everyone closer. With all the Hawaii people being here, it really feels like home because Hawaii is just a broad mix of cultures. I'll meet random people at Walmart who are like very genuine about helping me. The guy at Cracker Barrel was alumni and the guy at Enterprise was alumni. And I always ask them, yeah, I'm trying to get the scoops, you know, cause I don't believe Bob at first. Like, it's like they come here and then a lot of them, they weren't even from here, you know, they're from somewhere else and then they don't want to leave, you know, like they're like, oh, I just fell in love with this place. like. We'll probably leave someday, but we're good for now. Like, who knows when, like. Stepping on campus, putting on the pads for the first time during practice, it was more of, um, maybe I can fit in here. At first, you're always gonna have that little insecurity about where you're gonna be at, but all of that proved to me that it's a brotherhood, it's a family. Then I have people from Hawaii around me, so I'm not gonna be isolated. Try to get out of yourself. You're gonna have to grow into an adult sometime. So why not do it where you're most uncomfortable here in Illinois, it's gonna be cold, it's gonna be snowing. It's gonna be totally different from back at home. You gotta have full commitment to doing what you're doing because 
with anything you do, you can't just go like halfway on it. You gotta always go full on. Make the best of wherever you're at, you know? And then just be open to trying new things. Um, when I first got here, I, I didn't really like try to make new friends or talk to anyone. I was just kind of keeping in like a little Hawaii bubble, you know? I was like, oh, maybe people like in the mainland aren't that bad. If you're coming here from Hawaii, you got to know that you got to be committed to going to class. You got to be committed to doing, if you're doing a sport, just stick to it. And no matter what, just keep doing it. Don't quit.